he's like, man, I knew once this stuff got closer, you're going to start tripping. And I just wish that we could be how we were. You're about to be married, sir. Like that's a whole vow before God. It, like you, this isn't how that works. Ooh. Okay. 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 What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bria K. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. If you've been here before, what's up? Welcome back. As y'all can see by that title today, we're hopping right back into the single series, y'all. We had to get the holidays out the way and all that good stuff. But we are back in the single series. I know y'all didn't think I was finished. As y'all can see by the title, we are into another juicy story time today. Um, mm. These stories are all facts. Nothing has been dramatized. This is my real life. And I'm here to share it with y'all. So without further ado, I'm gonna be sharing today how I allowed myself to unintentionally be strung along for five years, i.e. Um, five years of side chick, and how I got blindsided again and he just married another girl. I know y'all like, dang, didn't that already happen to this girl? It did. It's it's. It happened to me twice, okay? All right, so if y'all see why I've been single for a minute, now you kind of understand, right? Because it, it was real painful. It was real painful out here for your girl. So so today, I have an acai bowl. Dang, that thing look good. Dum, dum, dum. All right, so how did we meet, right? At my new school, and at my new school, I ended up pledging a sorority. A lot of y'all don't know that, but I pledged a sorority. Uh, towards the end of my college career. So with that, you know, it comes a lot of socialization and mingling and all that stuff. And your girl was young with lots of energy. So I was hitting the road, doing road trips, parties, all that stuff, right? It was winter break. It was like a, a month and a week or something like that. I'm not gonna say any names or any identifying features here. So if you can piece this together, you need to work for the FBI, all right? So this weekend was at the head of uh, winter break. So I come home, I go to the little, you know, fraternities probate. And then like maybe the next day there's a Greek party or there's just some kind of college party happening. So me and my girls, we go uh, to some fraternity house. Like it's just a mix of different frat boys who live in this house together, posting like a pregame before this party. We get to this pregame and it's pretty chill. And everybody's just kind of doing their thing before we head to the party. We flick it up, take a few pictures. At this time, this is where I met, what's his name gonna be? Who sings that song, I Got Five on it? Since he took me through five years of this. I'm just playing y'all. We're gonna call him Pimpin'. Let's call him Pimpin', okay? So Pimpin' lives at this frat house. Cool, so we head to the party after we pregame at their house. And for some reason, I don't know if I left my ID in the car or at home or something, but this was a 21 plus party. So the bouncer at the door was just giving me all types of heck. And he like, no, you can't come in. And, da, 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 da. and I'm just like, dang. And at this point, most of the people we came with had already gone to the party. Like clockwork, pimping comes downstairs because like to get to the party, you, you go in the front door and then you go upstairs to the party. So for some reason he came down right at the time that I was getting bamboozled by the bouncer. And he was like, oh, she good, she straight, let her in. And I guess he knew the, the bouncer cause he was just like that guy. And then he was like, oh, okay, go in shorty. So I go in, go into the party and we just have a good time. Like I didn't talk to Pimpin' that night. I just had fun with my girls. Cool, that night ends. The next day, somebody ends up posting the pictures that we took at the pregame at Pimpin's house last night before the party. Somebody ends up posting it on Instagram and I got tagged. And it was like I said, a group photo. And then I saw him and I was like, dang, okay. Y'all know how I am. I either like you or I don't when I first see you. So, mm, mm, mm. Like, dang, he kind of cute. So I went to his page and I did what every person does when you're interested. I'm scoping the scene. I'm trying to see, is he connected? He got a girl, he got a wife, baby mama, nothing. We in the clear. So 
This was before Instagram had DMs, y'all. So y'all had to scroll back like 200 weeks ago. So I scrolled back 200 weeks ago. And I was like, I just picked a random picture. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for getting me in the party last night. Um, I really appreciate that. Just some generic, just a little ping, just to see, you know, if the fish were biting the, the bait that day. You know what I'm saying? So within like 10 minutes, he responds and he's like, oh yeah, it's no problem. Uh, matter, matter of fact, hit me up and we can link again over break. Cause it's when I break. And I was just like, ooh, mm and one right so i'm like okay he took the bait he took the bait so he, he give me his number and we start texting he's a pretty cool guy or whatever and he's like you know what we're actually having another like little kickback at my crib tomorrow and it's like a tuesday or wednesday again it's college and christmas break so no rules apply here right so i'm like all right boy I'll come through, come over for the kickback. And it was not a lot of people there. Like his house was dang near empty. So um, we got the chance to like get away and talk and build our connection and all that stuff. Mm, 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 mm. So we talking about like, you know, Greek stuff at first, then just life stuff and then blah, 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 blah. Y'all know I fall in love in three to five business days. In this case, it was like four hours. So after we talked, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in love. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. So um, the next day he hits me up and we just start hanging out like all winter break. We were linking up and um, you know, anywhere he went, I went and vice versa. He was inviting me to get his hair cut with him and invite me with the boys and you know, just make me feel real special and important. Like, you know how they be doing, right? Mm. Okay, cool. We locked in, right? hanging out every day, meeting all the important people in his life. We just chilling, kicking it, not giving each other no air to breathe because we really like each other. And then I think the week before I go back to school comes and when I'm home for winter break, I don't have my own place. I'm staying with my parents because I'm only here for like a month. So he was like, before you go back to school, can you promise me this one thing? I'm like, what's up, babe? And he's like, um, I just want to spend a night with you. You know, we haven't gotten the chance to spend a night and da 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 da. I want to have like a movie night, food, all that stuff. I'm like, oh, that's real cute, babe. And so I arranged for that. We plan for this Saturday before I go back to school. Then this Saturday comes, y'all. Why does stuff like this be happening to me? So the Saturday comes and I hit him up as usual. And there's like no response or it may, have, it may have been like a very vague response, like two or three letters, which is not normal. Okay. So at first I was like, well, maybe he's just busy because he is that guy. And um, I was like, you know, let me just busy myself until 7 p.m. or whenever we were supposed to link. Mm. At this point, it's like 4 p.m. I'm thinking it's really odd that I have not heard from him because like I said, we usually talking all the time either through text, if we're not texting, we're in person kind of thing. So I'm like, wow, I hope he's okay. You know, that's my initial thought. I'm like, it's 4 p.m. We're supposed to link in a few hours. Where is, where is he at? So I call, I text, no answer. I back off a little bit for a few hours. I'm like, you know what? He is a really busy guy. And I head out a little bit early before the time we're supposed to meet. And I head to this corner store by his house, right? I head to this corner store by his house and I'm like, let me just go ahead and get some snacks and drinks. You know, some of his favorite stuff I know we like since we're gonna be watching movies. Trying to think ahead, trying to be loving, loving. You know what I'm saying? So I hit him up, it's maybe like an hour before we're supposed to link. And I'm like, hey, I just grabbed your favorite gummies and da 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 da, so you don't have to worry about snacks. I'm gonna meet you um, in a minute. Nothing, no reply y'all. So at this point, my crazy starts kicking in but i'm still kind of worried i'm like is he okay because like he was I, hey if y'all used to know my type it's like it could go either way he could be in the streets or he could be cheating <laughs> anyway um so i start to get a little worried and like i said me and him were locked in so i knew all his best friends his closest people and i had their phone numbers so i started going down the list calling like yo have you heard from pimping today um 
And a couple of them gave answers where like they genuinely didn't know and I could tell. They were like, oh no, man, I heard from them maybe this morning, da 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 da. So then I'm, I'm like, oh, something done happened to my baby. But then a couple of his homeboys knew what he was doing, I suspect, and they made it real obvious. Cause I was like, yo, you know where Pippin at? And it was something off about the answers that let me know they knew exactly where he was at and exactly whom he was with, okay? Sounding all nervous like on the phone. So I took that information and it just like jet fueled my crazy pack. Like it just fueled it up. I'm like, here we go. I was trying so hard, but here we go. Uh, so as I told y'all, I'm at this corner store right by his house. So I zoom around there. I've never done a drive-by. He had never given me a reason not to trust him before this. But after that, get up and go. I'm like, oh, are we playing? So I go to his house and no cars are there. Dang, okay. No cars are there. His car is not there. His roommate's nothing. It's just an empty house, but it has lights on. So I'm like, okay. I get to create scenarios in my head. I'm like, okay, maybe... Maybe he hid his car around the corner and maybe he's in there with a the girl. Da, da, da. I just start coming up with stuff. So I get out of my car and I walk around to like every window in the house and just get to peeking. You know what I'm saying? Just creeping. Nothing was there. Um, so I camp out for like two or three hours. I'm telling y'all, my crazy used to be like have no chill. I was like, I have absolutely nowhere to be. I'm finna catch him in the act. I'm finna catch him in the act, right? So I sit by his house. Not directly, but like near so I can see cars that come and go for like two or three hours. At this point, um, I'm tired. I'm over it. It's like 11 p.m. So I don't sat in my car for a good like five or six hours total, right? Crazy. So after this, I just go home feeling heated and defeated. I was both mad. I was concerned. I'm like, is he okay? I'm just confused. I'm like, so he asked me to spend a night with him. We planned for this and now he want to ghost his sister? what you don't ghost me anyway so i go home and you know it just still wasn't sitting right in my spirits and i go to his instagram and i start scanning comments because i'm like maybe he's the type that doesn't post his girl for privacy but if he got some other girl he messed with maybe she in the comments so i get to scanning his comments on his pictures one of them stood out to me i can't tell you what it was but some stood out to me I click on her page. It clicks on my heartbreak. <laughs> like, I don't even know how else to say it, but the first thing I see on her page, her page is public, and I see her kissing my boo, like three, it said three or four hours ago. Then the picture before that was them booed up like two days ago. Then before that, it was like three days ago. So every time I was not with this man, he was with this girl who I didn't know who it was. I was just like so blindsided because we spent so much time together. Y'all know, once my craze is activated, it's really hard to turn that thing off. So I went to the picture where they just kissed a few hours ago and I was like, oh, I said something real petty to both him and her. Like, oh, so glad he's safe. I thought we were spending the night tonight or I, I just said something that I knew would get under her skin and his skin because once you hurt, it's just like, boom, you know what I'm saying? Boom, so, oh, after I made that comment, he immediately calls me within like 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, bro, I thought your phone didn't work, buddy, what's this? And he's like, why, why would you comment on her page? Da, 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 da. Sir, first of all, that's what you gotta ask me after all. No words. I end up going off on him and I'm like, we got to talk. I'm the type of person, like, back then, I wasn't cool with people doing me wrong and me not being able to speak my piece, right? So I was like, we got to talk in person. Like, I'm I'm livid. I just need to, I need to know why. I'm talking and he tells me uh, his ex hit him up and she was thinking about getting back together. And I'm like, well, you definitely could have updated me, homeboy. And I'm like, so what do you want to do? And he was like, I don't really know. He was like, she's just, you know, we had to talk. Okay, um, so I go back to school. We didn't really end, we didn't end on bad terms. It was just kind of like in limbo. So when I get back to school, I get to hitting them up again. And he's like, you know what? I'm not really on with you on anymore. Now this is the point in time 
I should have stopped talking to him. I cannot stress this enough, ladies, but when a man tells you he doesn't want to be in a relationship or he doesn't want to X, Y, Z, listen to him. That's exactly what he means. Nothing you can do or say is going to change his mind. Like, I wasted five years of my life because I didn't cut it off right here when he said he's not on what he's on anymore, which basically meant he didn't want to pursue getting to know me on a dating level or anything like that. I should have cut it off then, but my feelings were too involved and I was thinking with my emotions and not logically. I'll take accountability here. That led to me allowing him to string me along for five years until he married that girl from all the way back then. Yes, he married her, right? And he he flip-flopped between us all them years and maybe some other girls, who knows? But um, before I resume, I just want to say he told me in the beginning that he wasn't on what I was on anymore in so many words. So I should have left it alone, but <laughs> I was a little Rottweiler. Like I didn't back down easily. Plus, like I said, we were both Greek. So we both were going to continue to see each other at events and parties. And when I came home and that's exactly what happened. So anytime we were at a Greek, a Greek event or some kind of party or kickback or when I, I came home over break, we would link up. It was just inevitable for real. And our connection just kind of got stronger over time. It was like a homie, lover, friend type of thing. So we kind of entered this toxic cycle of dealing with each other and then not just based on whatever. This one weekend in particular was coming up that required travel, like a road trip. And he had did something to make me mad. I, don't, I can't remember what it was, but he was always just making me mad. Like dealing with other girls and just real disrespectful stuff, but I allowed it, so whatever. And he asked me for money for something to get fixed on his car so that we could all, well, he could go to this big road trip event that everybody was going to. Of course, I was mad at him, so I'm like, I'm definitely not about to give you X amount of money. Um, And I, we just, you know, kept going on. So I go on this road trip and it's to my understanding that he's not coming because his car is messed up, okay? So when the weekend comes, he's there, plus like all his homies, best friends, whatever. I'm like, I thought you weren't coming. Low key geeked. I'm like, my man is here. My bae is here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we all happy to see each other, whatever. We kick it that weekend. I think Sunday or Monday comes and at like 8 a.m. I get woken up to a, a picture of my bae pimping, plus like uh, his, his friends he had come with over that weekend and it said like, rest in peace. My heart literally jumped out of my tonsils. I'm just like, what? Cause you know, we all I saw was a picture of them, picture of Bay, and um, rest in peace under it. So I'm like, who, who, who? I just get to texting everybody like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And um, I come to find out that one of his best friends passed away. They had a car accident on the way home in which everybody in the vehicle was, was ejected from the vehicle. And um, it happened because they didn't have that part fixed on their car. The same part that he he was asking me to help him get, like help him pay for. So I dealt with like an immense amount of guilt after that accident. Cause it was just like, you know, I mean, I'm sure y'all can, can kind of understand why I felt guilty for a minute, but then I had to kind of let that go. Like, you know what I'm saying? But. Story short, um, they they got into a really bad accident on the way back from that road trip and one of his best friends passed away and he saw it. They all saw everything and a lot of people got hurt. It was really bad and it just really put a damper on the community. So again, with us having a very strong like emotional tie, um, I was there for him. Like we just kind of like got close during this time. He was kind of numb at the beginning of this stage, but like we got really close. And so it kind of um, reconnected us a few years after we had started this little toxic cycle, right? And um, we just would link up all the time just to talk. You know what I'm saying? It's just to connect and I was just making sure he was good. Cause like, I was like, I know that has to be traumatizing beyond words. And um, during this time he ends up getting his now wife pregnant. <laughs> so now he got a baby mama. The ex from the beginning is now his baby mama. It seemed like they were always fighting. He would always tell me they're not together. Um, and I believed him because like they didn't live together. It was just like a bunch of variables that made me honestly believe he wasn't messing with this girl. He just called her crazy, da da da. 
So he gets her pregnant during this time and that puts distance between us again, right? I'm like, ugh, that hurt me on another level. At this point, y'all probably like, girl, why didn't you know you were a side chick? He just got his whole ex from back in the day pregnant. I met this man's family. I know that means nothing now, but in my little immature brain, I'm like, I don't met his mama, his dad, half brothers, like everybody really close and important to him. And he was a private person. So I'm like, you know, I'm thinking that means something. He gets her pregnant and that kind of just, at that point, I'm like, ugh, like, ugh super hurt or whatever the baby gets here once the baby gets here he starts talking to me again and i allow it because we just i don't know we just had this little tight bond that would not break so this is probably about year three and a half or four of this escapades of whatever this is and um at this point like i do what i do he do what he do he clearly still messes with his baby mama so i get into a very abusive relationship right and I'll tell y'all about that on my next story time. I get into a very, very traumatic relationship, not with him, but with somebody else. So me and him go like for a long period of time without dealing with each other. I get out of that relationship and I come running back to him because he's my safe space. So we talk it through. He's there for me. This time he's there for me for my traumatic experience. And, um, you know, we back stuck like glue. This is like year four of this, right? Okay. <clears throat> So we back talking, back linking up regularly. Our connection is good, strong as ever. And I'm out celebrating something. I'm not gonna tell y'all cause that, that was just give it away, but I'm out celebrating somewhere. And the person I'm with is it's like deja vu for my first story time, but a different person. I'm out celebrating and I just get all these alerts that he just proposed to his baby mama. I was just with him two days before he said nothing of the sorts. He didn't mention her. As far as I knew, they were at odds. So I start seeing vi videos and pictures of him on his knees proposing to her. And I go off. I go clean off. Whoever I'm with, I'm just spilling all the beans. I'm like, ah! I'm just over it. I'm like, this did not just happen to me again. It already happened like a few, like years ago and it's happening again. Are you serious? Like at this point, I thought we were good enough friends to be honest, like he could have let me know two days before that he was about to propose to the girl, especially because we were still um, homie lover friends, right? Still homie lover friends. He'd give me a kiss on the cheek, you know, just treat me like bae. So he proposes to her and I just like blank out. I just start going off. I'm telling all my business. I'm telling all his business to whoever I'm with at the time because I just I was just like, what just happened? Like we were just good, like literally two days ago. Anyways, um, I guess he already knew I was about to start tripping because when I, like the next week comes, he's like, he tells me something like, basically his baby mother and her mom did not want her to be another statistic or single black mom. And so they kind of forced him to marry her or else she was gonna move away with their kids. Something like that, it sounded believable. To this day, I don't know if that's truly what happened, but that's what he told me. So once I heard that, like a little dumb dumb, I'm like, oh, okay, well, you don't really want to marry her. Let's let's continue what we got going on, right? Dumb, dumb as a box of rocks. Okay. <clears throat> so as a, the wedding approaches, I start realizing like, I'm not going to continue this with a married man. And so, you know, we may be like six months out from the wedding at this point. And I tell him, I'm like, we need to cease our friendship or whatever this is now or just start trying to because i'm like i'm not going to be able to see you every week anymore we're not going to be able to talk uh you know almost every day and all this stuff when you're married i honor god i honor marriage i honor all that stuff and i want you to as well so we got to go our separate ways and he was just like what i could never basically like he was just like he was like no that's not happening as the day approached, I just really started weaning myself off of him. Like he would contact me and I just wouldn't respond. We saw each other less and less. He's like, man, I knew once I got married, you was going to start tripping. And I knew once this stuff got closer, you were going to start tripping. And I just wish that we could be how we were. You're about to be married, sir. Like that's a whole vow before God. It, like you... This isn't how that works. We didn't have a normal friendship by any means, any stretch of the imagination, okay? 
basically dating without the title. Again, ladies, don't do it. And um, and then he gets married. The morning after he gets married, I'm sitting in church by myself. I know what's happened. I'm just kind of letting, giving it to God. I'm like, whatever. He texts me. The morning after his wedding, like the morning after he got married, he texts me. And he was like, can I come over? Because at this point I have my own spot. He was like, can I come see you or something like that? I'm utterly in confusion. Like, I'm so confused. I'm like, um, did you <laughs> did you just get married? So I think I said something like, I'm in church. God bless you and your wife. Some real short, blunt, petty. You know what I'm saying? Boom. But he was married and I was done. Like, I don't play with marriage. This is like year five. It's basically trickling towards the end. Um... I move out of my first place. I move to another location. I get a new job. Lo and behold, the devil is in the details because I just got a new loft. I got a new job. It's in the heart of downtown, right? Okay. So during my training, the person who's training me takes me to his job. Two different buildings. Two different buildings, y'all. Like, I don't even know how this happened. Like I said, devil was in the details for real. Like, it wasn't nobody but the devil in my opinion, because like, what? Anywho, so I get this new job and they tell me that I'm gonna be visiting different sites every week to conduct some, some type of business. The first site that I have to visit every week for a long chunk of time is at his job. Not only at his building and on his floor, but in the exact area that he works in. He's married, we haven't talked in months. I'm off the face of the planet in his eyes. So I was like, I don't know how I was feeling, but I, I knew once they said, oh, we're going to wherever we were going to. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know he works there. He's worked there for like a year. I'm pretty sure he still works there. So we pull up, we go to the floor and I sit down and I'm trained. The room I'm in, the door is open. And so whoever walks by can see straight in and they can see me. So I'm there for no less than 30 minutes and he walks by and he sees me. He walks back by. And he walks back by, cause I didn't tell him nothing. Like I said, we not friends at this point. He don't know nothing that's going on in my life, right? He keeps walking by and he texts me. He was like, um, like, do you work here or something like that? And I, I just told him, I was like, I'm in training. And uh, I just kept, kept it short. I was like, I'm, I, I'm in training. I don't work at your company, but I'm gonna be working with your company basically. And so he was like, well, let me know before you leave. And so he wanted to walk me to the parking garage. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So this happened like almost every week I visited him, but it started kind of like building that emotional bond back up because he would like walk me to my car. Then he wanted to buy me lunch and stuff like this. And I realized I had to even cut that off because I'm like, there's nothing wrong, but it's also nothing right. Like if his wife knew that he's simply walking me to my car. Like in all the history, the five years of history we have, that's not okay, right? Um, so I stopped telling him when I was coming, I would go straight in the building, straight out, straight business. And um, I ended up getting a new job because I didn't like that job and I never saw him again to this day. It is 2023 and he just tried to add me on Facebook like a month ago, 2022. And he's done that. Like he tried to add me on Instagram, Snapchat, like wherever I may exist, he still tries to reach out to me. So um, that's basically it. Like I said, it was five years of side chick because we were dating without a title and then he married somebody else and then I cut it short. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all next time how to avoid that and how to really see like if he's just not that into you. Although this story still perplexes me because the fact that he still reaches out to me, he's been married 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 for like five plus years. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I'm over it. I've, I've healed from the situation. It took a lot out of your girl. I cannot lie. But let me know. Like, y'all let me know what y'all think about this situation for real. And um, I'll be right back here next week. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Real, real soon. Peace.